Oh yeah. Time for a demonstration. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I would like to talk about exercise. Well, kind of. I'm actually going to be talking about heart rate, which at the core of exercise, you got heart rate. So, um, people have been asking me to do some exercise videos, and personally, right now, um, I'm still working out, lifting weights, uh, doing cardio. I always do cardio, but I'm kind of taking it a little easy right now since my first competition this year, being on stage, doing a physique competition. Um, I've kind of had just some some joint problems, some shoulder impingement. I'm trying not to uh, hurt myself, but I'm just slowly rehabbing what I got. And at the same time, it means I can still do cardio. Anyone can do cardio, and I highly recommend it. It's really one of the best things for the body. It's a great starting point, and it's virtually free. If you want, you can go out there and start pounding the pavement. You can go for a run whenever you want. That's free to anybody. So at the core of cardiovascular exercise is heart rate. So that's what I'd like to talk about today, at least starting out. So heart rate your heart beats before you're even born and you know before you even celebrate a day on this earth it's already beating and the day it beats its last beat is your last day on the planet your heart is a wonderful thing and it's at the center of it all it's pumping blood that's carrying oxygen and nutrients to all the cells and it's taking the waste away from cells things like carbon dioxide that gets sent back to the lungs to be respired out so how many times does your heart beat in a minute all you have to do is take your pulse and you measure it over 60 seconds. That's your heart rate. If you take your pulse over 30 seconds, you can multiply it by 2. If you take it over 20 seconds, multiply it by 3. If you take it over 15, multiply it by 4. And finally, the least accurate if you want, you can take it over 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. Basically, the shorter the amount of time you take it over and the higher the integer you multiply it by, the less accurate it becomes. But that's how you reach how many beats did your heart beat in six in 60 seconds in one minute so across the board men usually have lower resting heart rates than women kind of like men are naturally supposed to be uh, slimmer or have less body fat it doesn't mean it holds true for all situations it's just part of the differences between the sexes but oddly enough most people would say that the lower your heart rate the healthier you are and the longer you would live on the planet as in you only have a set number of heartbeats and obviously the lower your heart rate the longer it would take you to reach your final heartbeat so people with lower heart rates are healthier but statistically men live shorter lives than women this has a number of factors involved but given a natural lifespan without a missed day due to chronic illness uh, biologically speaking men should probably live longer than women the fact is the lower your heart rate the healthier you are and most of the time this means you will live longer on this planet the lower your heart rate the more efficient your heart is at carrying out its mandatory task of sending oxygenated blood to all the cells of the body this takes a combination of factors like blood pressure stroke volume respirations all of which affect how much blood gets pumped out of the heart with the oxygen to the cells of the body caffeine and other drugs can also affect how, how fast your heart beats your heart rate will also lower with less stress and when you're at rest. So most people can take a resting heart rate just by sitting down and taking it over 60 seconds. You could be taking it right now as you sit in your chair at home or at the office. That would be a good resting heart rate. Your true resting heart rate, the lowest your heart rate will ever reach and that is still self-measurable is right when you wake up in the morning because as you sleep, your body falls into its lowest metabolic rate possible. If you had a device that measured it during your sleep, you could see how low it truly goes. But for now, the lowest you'll ever measure is when you're lying, up, lying in bed upon waking. So how does exercise relate to heart rate? As you exercise, your heart rate will increase to meet the energy demands of the body. If you start to force yourself into aerobic exercise, your body shifts its primary energy source to fat and starts using oxygen from the lungs to burn it and reach prolonged energy output. This is really good for the heart and a great way to burn fat. There are so many benefits to aerobic cardiovascular exercise that I'm not going to be able I won't be able to name them all here. But what is an optimal rate for exercise? What's an optimal heart rate? Most people have a target heart zone, a zone in which they should try to maintain their heart's number of beats to get the most benefit. Now, since we all decline metabolically as we age, most of the major stratifications in which uh, we measure that decline is by decade. For instance, if you hop on a cardio machine, 
it'll have the target heart rate zones by age like 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. It doesn't mean that if you're over the age of 30 that your heart is never going to be as healthy as a 20-something year old. This is just a brief overview or guideline. And these guidelines, they're based on an average maximum heart rate for that group. Your maximum heart rate, the maximum number of beats you can attain in a minute, is unique to you and modifiable by you. The more you do cardio and the healthier your diet, the higher your maximum heart rate may become, and in turn, the lower your resting heart rate may be. You're training your heart by forcing it into an area outside its comfort zone, and this makes it stronger and ultimately leads to weight loss and increased longevity. Most cardio machines and fitness organizations recommend training between 60 and 80% of your maximum heart rate for a duration of time, usually about 15 minutes for maximum benefit. So if you only walk at like a small incline and you get your heart rate up to say 55% of your max and you keep it there for 15 minutes, you're not training as effectively as if you got your heart rate up to at least 60% or even up to 80% of your maximum, say by jogging at a moderate speed for 15 minutes. How you get your heart rate up is up to you, but you have to maintain that increase in heart rate for a minimum of 15 minutes to get the benefit. I personally train at a high level and I prefer uh, you know, sometimes 20, even up to 30 minutes of training. I also love cardio, and I have a resting heart rate of a Galapagos turtle. So I plan on living on planet Earth for about 120 years. A quick overview of some generalities of heart rate. The younger you are, the higher you can get your heart rate. Men have lower resting heart rate than women. The lower your resting heart rate, the healthier you are. The higher you get your heart rate in exercise, the better. And training between 60 and 80% of maximum heart rate for 15 minutes is adequate for weight loss and cardiovascular benefit. Your maximum heart rate is difficult to measure and it's unique to you. I'd use a chart of general exercise reference for an estimate. For now, train hard and get your heart rate up when you train. Get it way up and see how high you can get it and how long you can maintain it. That's the key to good quality cardio. Thanks for watching.